we've done a couple videos, a couple posts on this, but I wanted to kind of get in more detail. So are you ready? I know. Tell your friends because we're going to talk about the belly button method. All right. So today I want to be able to help you understand a little bit more intensely the belly button method, uh, what I like to call buttoning, right? And it's interesting because there's a lot of different labels for this, um, different types of you know, people claim it's a different thing, like the Pachote um, method or delivery system, or that you actually have a Pachote gland. Um, the medical community, by the way, doesn't really recognize this. So, so it's an interesting thing because I hear scientists or doctors saying this is sort of quack, <laughs> quack science. Um, but, and my big but in all of this is just simply that it works. And so if something works, I'm not interested in throwing the baby out with the bathwater. I want to see why and, and kind of try to understand it a little bit more. So I'm going to share with you the do's and the don'ts and how to do it. Um, Cause many of you guys have told me, but Jen, I've had like a serious reaction doing its way. And I'm going to explain to you why. <laughs> so I'm going to help you navigate this. All right. So who am I? My name is Jen O'Sullivan and I am an educator. I educate anybody who's interested in learning Better Methods on Health and Wellness. So I'm certified in French Medicinal Aromatherapy through the New York School for Aromatic Studies. Um, I have been just one of those people that is constantly on here educating. I have my little dog Dash in the background getting into some trouble, which is always fun. But I work out of my home office, and all of you always ask about all the oils that are behind me. Um, I clearly work for Young Living. I'm a Young Living distributor. I absolutely adore Young Living. I've been with them since 2007, but interestingly didn't start sharing my love of oils until uh, four years ago. And I've just been growing since then. So I'm a gold leader with Young Living. Super excited about being able to lead so many of you Crossline members. And uh, my, my simple background story is that I'm really, really impressed with our human body. I'm really <laughs> excited about learning new things. So you guys will always hear me, you know, researching something new and getting excited about something new or maybe even sharing something with you guys that then I come to realize later, oh no, that wasn't exactly right. One of the topics that we'll be covering soon is frequency that we didn't get exactly right. And I'm really excited about the new studies that are being done on it and how to help us really understand it better. So super exciting there. And um, I really, what was interesting to me is I was introduced uh, by some random person who came to one of those network marketing things. I was the photographer in the group and she was the oil person and she was brand new, came in, shared oils. I bought them, didn't know who she was. She ended up leaving the group pretty soon after. I still don't know who that person is. And so as I moved forward, I didn't really know you guys existed. I didn't know that there was this beautiful group community where people could really understand oils. Um, a girlfriend of mine who used to be in one of my college classes came over just for some business coaching. She was a just about to hit diamond and was trying to get away from this plateau that she was experiencing. So she was looking outside the box and asked me what I thought. So I gave her some advice that she ended up using. And four months later, I was like, you know what? I think I want to help what she's doing. I'm really excited about her passion and I want to link arms with her. So I called Young Living, found out that I was eligible to switch. Again, I still to this day don't know who I signed up with because she was just some random person that came into my life, never to contact me again. I know a lot of leaders do that and I'm not entirely sure why. So because I was eligible to switch, I did. So I, I literally moved over to Jessica's um, line and uh, never looked back, continued to move forward. Super excited um, to be here with you guys today to share with you something that a lot of you guys are excited about, <laughs> right? I mean, how many of you guys have thought, what in the world is this belly button method? And, you know, does the Pacho this, this Pachote, you know, this is one of the things when you start to understand the Pachote gland, when you look that up, you see a lot of it referencing uh, CBD oil, uh, cannabis, you know, marijuana, <laughs> people using it that way, because that's sort of the, the the kind of rise to fame of the Pachote gland. But um, I just like to call it buttoning because I'm not, you know, not interested in getting into the whole pot scene. We do carry um, the best CBD oil on the planet. Um, and, and based on what I know about this company, there's no things that are going to make you go loopy, which is awesome. Uh, and so that's, that's where I'm at with that. So that's just me. No judgment if you um, like your pot, <laughs> but just for me uh, personally. Um, so you're going to look, if you look up Pachoti, P-E-C-H-O-T-I, you're going to see a lot of articles about CBD. So just forewarning. Okay. So 
what's the science behind this? And why do a lot of scientists or doctors claim this is quack science, right? Like things that really are not true. <laughs> okay. And I, I've talked with plenty of scientists and doctors about plenty of things that we all do. And they throw the baby out with the bathwater, use, to use that expression again. They really do. They, they, because they don't understand it and because in their minds, their assumption is it makes no sense. They just claim it makes no sense because what happens after you're born, right? We know that our umbilical cord is our life. It is what <clears throat> made us our mom, right? We were attached to her. That was our life. Our life grew because of our umbilical cord attached directly to our mom. And the moment they cut that off and your lungs start to work, what happens is there's this funky jelly inside of your umbilical cord that flattens it out, kind of just like, okay, we're done, <laughs> okay? And as we grow older, that just dries up. So that umbilical cord that's going into your body now that is wrapped around your liver becomes this sort of dried up thing that now, you know, doctors and scientists would say, well, it really doesn't do anything. It serves no pur purpose. It dries up and it is what it is. Okay. So what in our Ayurvedic medicine, they have found that it's a very successful pathway. So if I think about like our veins and our nerves, all of that, when we use essential oils, they're very small molecules. They kind of travel where they want to go. And it, we know through using reflexology points, right, the points on the bottom of our feet to, to kind of help support different areas in our body, we know that, that it works, right? So like this is something that like doctors can't really understand necessarily, but it works. And it's thousands of years worth of study in reflexology points. So it's a similar situation when it comes to the pachodi gland or that belly, you know, the gland behind your belly button, that it's kind of this flat, dried up, they call it a long, it's, it's this idea of round ligament. It's a ligament that's sort of dried up and kind of reaches around the actual liver. And um, what's interesting to me is it becomes a really like almost smooth highway. It allows things to get in, meaning different oils that you might be putting on. So some of you might be like, ah, like, again, I, that doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, a lot of things in our body really doesn't make sense to any of us. And I sort of giggle a little bit when I hear emphatic doctors stay, state one thing and then two years later, like they're stating a complete opposite thing. Because our bodies are so intricately, wonderfully, fearfully made in a way that we still don't know even like a tenth of what our body's capable of, right? And what it actually does. So for me, if I look at essential oils or if, if I, we've talked about this before, like if I look at electricity, just because the people who didn't understand it when it was discovered, you know, we're, we're all going to live in the dark because you don't understand it, but we can see the effects of it. So that's the same point. I can see the effects of using essential oils in my belly button. And so I'm not interested in saying it's not effective because it works, right? It does. And so many people will use the belly button method to just deliver essential oils to that location, right? And so some people will say, well, that's all it's doing is it's just closer to maybe some of your organs that you're trying to help. Uh, but others of us experience some really fascinating benefits when it comes to emotional health, hormone health, support with better sleep. Uh, some of you experience less dry lips, right? It's really fascinating to see. And if you go into my main education group, the human body and essential oils, you'll see a poll that I did to see kind of who was having different responses from this and where were you at? Not, you know, even one of the things is I didn't see any difference. And I always tell people to do this for seven days at a time. And and then people ask, well, why? <laughs> and it's because usually it's at the four to seven day mark of consistent doing this, like consistently doing this every single evening. If you're trying to gain a more restful night's sleep, that's when you start seeing the benefit of benefits of this start happening. So just so you're aware, it's not like something weird starts to happen. It's just, you know, if you're doing, if you try it one night, chances are you might have some funky dreams or it just won't work and you'll be like, whatever. Again, give it at least four to seven nights in a row. So if you skip a night, you have to start over from scratch. Your body needs to kind of get used to this. Okay, so let me explain some, something that many of you have had a really hard time with about um, 
I've done this and I had a severe rash, right? Like you got this major rash all around your belly button for like two weeks and you're like, it's not worth it. Okay, I want to explain something to you when it comes to what's going on there. Uh, it's not the oils. What it is, is it's your belly button. Sorry, girlfriend, but you got to clean that thing out. <laughs> okay, so um, when we look at acid causing things, oftentimes in our in our bodies, right, it's synthetics. And essential oils go drastically and emphatically and right away to work on anything in our body that is synthetic or acidic. Our, those oils want to placate acid and they also want to attack anything that's bad, right? We know this. You put a drop of lemon essential oil on a styrofoam cup and the thing melts right through. You put an essential oil of lemon, something that has high monoterpenes onto a strawberry and it seems to clean it better, right? It seems to shine even more. So we know that on organic things, oils work to help organic things, whereas oils try to eliminate, attack, seek and destroy uh, synthetics in our bodies. Okay, so let's think about your belly button for a second. And this is gonna be very logical to you, um, but the belly button is a magnet for debris and buildup of literally random toxins, okay? And I think it's interesting because if you just think about your whole life, you have not lived synthetic free. You just haven't, right? Your mom has slathered synthetic fragrances and sunscreens and lotions on your body. Um, you've worn many clothes. I'm, you know, I'm wearing some kind of, I don't know what's actually they're made out of, but like leggings that have lots of stretch. So I'm sure there's some synthetics in there, right? I'm not wearing hundred percent cotton. Um, but here's an interesting thing, right? A research team who studies belly buttons. I always love that kind of stuff. They found a bacteria strain that is only found in the soil of Japan in one of their test subjects, and that person had never been to Japan before. So they were scratching their heads, and I'm thinking, uh, obvious, right? That person probably bought some clothing item that came from Japan, <laughs> okay? And there was a bacteria strain in that clothing material, and they wore it, and that got into their belly button and then thrived, because the belly button is a cool little place to have fun things happen. Not for us, but for bacteria. So when you think about this and what you're buying clothing from, it's not all made in the country that you're from. Uh, you, you know, you're constantly rubbing up again. So your belly button come, becomes this little like trash can for synthetics from anything from personal care products that you're using, even uh, just your clothing in, in more in more than I think more sense your clothing. <laughs> okay, so um, so what is this? What does this look like? Here's my recommendation. If if you understand essential oils are trying to seek and destroy and you've got this little trash can on your stomach and you try to put a lavender drop in there, uh, World War III is going to break out in your belly button. And what's going to be the, si you know, the sideline massacre is your skin. OK, <laughs> so what you need to do before you start the belly button method, the buttoning. Right. And again, I like to call it buttoning because I think it's super cute and and not. I don't like Pachodi. I think that's a weird name. So I don't use that name. <laughs> so I just call it buttoning. But what you do with buttoning is you either, if you can't really get into your belly button well, just soak in a bath and use your pinky and just try to get in there and try to wash it out as best you can. You can also use a Q-tip, uh, so, you know, like one of those cotton swabs in some rubbing alcohol if you really want to get in there and pull stuff out. Um, I don't know if you've ever tried this before, but I have, you know, stick your pinky finger in there as deep as you can or get a cotton swab and rub it around in there as deep as you can and then smell it. I know, gross. Some of you guys are like, oh, she just went there. I have a boy, 11 years old, and I'm such a tomboy. So for me, I, that's like the funniest thing in the world. So telling a friend to, you know, squeeze their finger into their belly button and then smell their finger and it's like, ah, that will give you an idea of if your belly button is clean or not, okay? So just being real with you here, friends. So I encourage you to clean it out well. You could even get some Thieves um, mouthwash and put that on a cotton swab and really dig in there. Um, it'll feel funky. You'll feel kind of a weird tingle behind your belly button. Again, don't tell me as a doctor or a scientist that nothing's going on behind that belly button because I feel it. 
when I stick my pinky finger in there as hard as I can, it's a funky feeling behind my belly button, right? There's like some sort of weird tingle uh, in an odd way that just feels like, Ugh, right? So when you start to understand how cool this is, I want you to clean your belly button out before you do this because I don't want you guys messaging me back saying like, I had a crazy reaction and I'm thinking your belly button was dirty, <laughs> okay? So that's basically what this is. So why would you do this, right? Again, think hormone support. I, you could, I mean, I'm just gonna hold up a couple oils here, Progessence Plus, you could use this in your belly button. Now, a lot of people choose to use something like lavender, just drip a drop in their belly button. But again, it might be wise of you in the beginning to use some carrier oil. So again, clean your belly button out, put a drop of carrier oil in and then a drop of lavender or simply create a dropper bottle, right? So pre-dilute and you could put about 10 to one. So, and you can even dilute that more if you wanted, but that would be 10 drops of carrier to one drop of um, essential oil. Uh, you can do this on kids. You can do this even on infants as long as you dilute enough. Usually it's 25 drops to one. Again, it just depends on what oil you're using. There's no one size fits all because it depends on the oil. So some of you guys, like if you wanted to use thieves, that's spicy. So even I wouldn't do that. I would use that with carrier. All right. So the carrier could potentially stain clothing, jammies, your bed, right? If you're doing this, um, before bed, which many of us do this before bed. Uh, what I encourage you to do is use jojoba oil, which is technically a wax, which won't stain. You'll see it, but then when you wash it, the washing machine will wash it out easily, whereas other carrier oils could potentially stain your clothing or your sheets. So that's just, just to let you know. I do not use carrier oil anymore. I've gone through kind of a process of getting used to this, and now I can just put one drop of lavender in my belly button right before I go to bed. Okay, other oils you could do would be any of the calming oils like Stress Away, uh, Valor, Sandalwood. And what a lot of people do is take the, the oil, you could just put some on your finger and rub your belly button. I've had so many weird random men say, please do a demo. Nope, not doing a demo, <laughs> okay? Um, but you could take some Valor. I know um, some people use a gentle baby, again, gentle baby's not gentle, it's a little bit strong. So make sure that you go ahead and put a little bit of carrier oil on the spicier oils, but you can just do a couple drops of carrier oil and like one drop of gentle baby and then like rub it in your hands and then you'll put it in your belly button and you can even rub around your belly button and that's totally fine to do. Some people have asked, well, I have an Audi, what do I do? And I'm thinking it's the same difference, right? Just drip a drop on the belly button and rub it. You know, if you have a, a deep any, you can drip a drop and just lay back and relax. Listen to one of my talks. <laughs> Give it like 15 to 20 minutes. And then if it's it's still going to be in there, by the way. So then at that point, you can just rub it. So what I usually do when before I roll over, because I don't want the sheets to be blessed by my oils. I want me to be blessed by my oils. So I'm a side sleeper. So I will rub it and then rub it rub it, smell it, it's all good, okay? And there's so many essential oils you could use. Cedarwood, I see so many people posting different oils. You could use um, valerian or valor or tranquil. You can use the roll-ons that we have. Our roll-ons are pre-diluted, which is great. Um, but so many of you guys also use this for just helping with tummies, right? Helping to balance our tummies. So you can do this for children, right? If you wanted to use tummy jays on there, um, you can use sleepy eye, sleepy jays on there. Like you literally use all of the essential oils that we have that are diluted right away on a child right in their belly button. Um, and so that's up to you. Like any oil, just remember if it's a spicy oil, you may want to use carrier oil and don't forget to clean out your button. <laughs> okay. So this is a fun topic. I think it's really great to help you guys understand all of this and how this all works. Um, I did do a write-up in the um, the book, the new one, the Supplements Desk Reference. So it starts on page 79. So if you go into page 79, I talk about possible reasons for negative reactions. And I, I list all of this stuff out and I actually give the study so you can go check it out. You guys can look it up right now if you want, but it's tinyurl. I try to do tiny URLs in here, um, but tinyurl.com forward slash button bacteria and that'll give you the article that talks about that research team who are studying who studies buttons it's so fascinating so if you are interested in learning more about this or if you are 
trying to figure out like what oils to use, I want to make one major word of caution. It is extremely important that you do not use synthetic essential oils. 90% of all essential oils on the market have synthetics in them. Did you hear that? 90%. And this was a study done in France about their export of oils. And it's a very fascinating when you start to get into understanding the fact that you can't do this method with most oils on the market, okay? So if you're not with Young Living, or if you're not sure what company that you're using is pure, and you want to get started with me, if you have a friend that, that introduced you to me, absolutely talk to them about this. Ask them what oils you think you should try first. They'll work with you. But if you're not a Young Living member and you're interested in starting, I want to get you started, okay? I want to help you sign up. Today's a great day to get started. My member number is 946916. Remember, I started in 2007, so I only have a six-digit number. It's crazy. But 946916, and I will absolutely work with you. The moment you get started on this, if you want me to walk you through sign up, I can totally walk you through that. Um, and we have extra special deals. So at any month, each month, the specials change. So just ask me what our specials are. But I would love to get you started on this because it's wild how well it works. It helps with all sorts of potential things that you might need help with. <laughs> All right, you guys. Um, if you don't have the supplements desk reference, you can get it on Amazon. This book is a game changer for many of you. A lot of you guys don't even realize stuff like this is in there. Um, so I wanted to kind of let you know about that too. All right. So Amazon or 31oils.com forward slash supplements. Thanks so much. And we will see you guys soon. Take care guys. Bye. Ah, all right, so I'm still on live for you guys. I'm gonna just check questions for my fun viewers on YouTube. Awesome, oh, some of you guys are using Peace and Calming. That's a great one, I love that one. Let me see who else, yep. Cool, a lot of you guys on here, awesome. Very fun to have you guys on here. All right, you got your book out, very cool. So now you can check that out. Yay. <laughs> all right so have fun and i look forward to seeing more questions from you guys i hope that um the the youtube channel is helpful so that you guys can add your friends and they don't have to be on facebook i feel like facebook a lot of people are sort of trying to find alternative methods but we're still on facebook most of it but all right take care you guys bye